while we switch um, and prepare for the next and last, I think, I believe final magic trick, actually trick maybe is a good way to start introducing Marco because he's all but tricks. Uh, and perhaps um, Marco Tempest uh, is a, uh, uh, the embodiment of tricks that are tales, tricks that tell stories, and tricks that are, bring us closer to who we are uh, as humans and to what we imagine. Um, and Marco works at the intersection of magic and technology and will end the day of magic with hopefully a lot of mischief and a lot of many stories of the mind. And Marco very graciously uh, also wanted to acknowledge uh, Joey's uh, fellows program. Joey started, because Marco is a fellow uh, at the MIT Media Lab, Joey started the fellows program, I believe three years ago. Joey, forgive me if it's four, but I believe it's three years ago. Um, and the fellows have become, in a way, agents uh, of consciousness for the Media Lab uh, that come from the world to the Media Lab and from the Media Lab into the world. Um, so they, they, are, they are sort of, re they represent um, this, the agents of change uh, that quote unquote contaminate the Media Lab with worldly, uh, with the worldly ideas and the worldly presence and vice versa, uh, which in and of itself is a kind of magic. So we're very honored to have you as a fellow, but also as a magician and a storyteller. Please come. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. As you already heard, my name is Marco Tempest. I'm a cyber illusionist, which means I combine magic and technology to create, well, something a little different. What you're about to see uses augmented reality, a layer of computer graphics superimposed over the real world. The magic happens up there on the screen, and the real world is here. You can choose which to watch, the magic, the reality, or a little of each. So let's begin. Today is a special day, a day that we are all sharing, a day that will never be repeated, a day that we will all remember. Because of this, the calendar, 12 months, 365 days, sometimes a leap year. These days keep a record of our journey through time, past, present, and future. And we all think that one of these days is more special than the others. Our birthdays, this is mine. December 13th. It was on my sixth birthday that I saw my first magician. He produced a rabbit out of a hat. Abracadabra. If you were of a mystical disposition, you could say that this one day, this particular birthday, did indeed influence my future career. You'll be glad to know that I no longer wear the hat. There have been many attempts to correlate the date of our birth to our personality. And the most popular of these is astrology. Astrologers believe that our personalities can be ascribed to one of the 12 sun signs, patterns produced by the stars. So I'm not only born on December 13th, I'm also born under the star sign of the archer. Sagittarius. Oh, sorry. I read horoscopes for fun, but I don't take them very seriously. But then again, we Sagittarians are renowned for our skepticism. <laughs> the Swiss psychiatrist Carl Jung took a different view. He was the founder of analytical psychology and profoundly interested with our connection with archetypes and symbols. We are born at a given moment in a given place 
and like vintage years are rhyme, they have the qualities of the year and the season of which we are born. Astrology does not lay claim to anything more. Perhaps we shouldn't dismiss the astrologers too easily. Our own biological clocks depend on the movements of the planets. The sun, after all, rules our day. The light it emits affects the brain, which prevents the production of melatonin, the chemical that makes us feel sleepy. We have evolved a 24-hour body clock that matches the rotation of our planet from day to night as it orbits the sun. Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine, went further. He suggested that where and when you were born had an influence on your health and your life. My aunt said that summer babies have a healthier disposition, which is a little disappointing for those of us born in the autumn. Now, I was born in the winter, and the Swiss winter at that. Perhaps that's why it's my favorite time of the year. The calendar continues to guide our lives. It's the diary of our days, the sum of every hour we spend. We have it on our wall, computer, and of course, our watch. Now, I have no idea whether the day of my birth played a part in my destiny. I leave that to the astrologers and the scientists to figure out. But I do subscribe to something that the theologian William Barclay said. He said that there are two great days in a person's life, the day you were born and the day you discover why. Now, I hope that each and every one of you will discover yours. Now, one final thing. There are 987 people in this room. And according to mathematicians, there is a 100% probability that two of them will share the same birthday. And a 93.33% probability that one of these people will have their birthday today. Now, if this is you and you know who you are, then I have only one thing to say. Happy birthday and happy 30th anniversary to the MIT Media Lab. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a great pleasure for me to introduce to you a very special anniversary greeting. And here it is. Nicholas Negroponte, thanks to you, thanks to your vision, your courage, and your perseverance, today is a very happy day because the Media Lab is 30 years young. And I say young because the essence of the Media Lab is to stay young and to continue to invent forever. So it will begin again and again and again. Thinking about that makes me want to play for you something that's also a beginning, the prelude of the first suite by Bach. Thank you. 
Thank <laughs> you. 